Thank you very much. So good morning to all of you. But it's not easy to come after such a great lecture of Professor Zvonka Zupanitslavec. But I'll try to say something about the challenges of global pandemic for the nation states and the response of the Catholic Church. Okay. So, just to make this, okay. A crisis usually brings to the surface what has been covered for some time, but we have not paid enough attention to what is happening. The global crisis in connection with the pandemic COVID-19 has thus revealed many processes at the international level and also within individual countries. The emergence of the virus not only poses challenges for medicine, but shakes up almost all areas of human life, from economy, education and politics, to the family life, friendship and religion, to name but a few. The belief that global belonging to common humanity will continue to grow and that nationalisms and particular affiliations will gradually be overcome has also been shaken. It is true that humanity has probably never before experienced such concrete interdependence and interconnectedness at the global level as it did this year, precisely because of the coronavirus, but the response to the global pandemic has indeed shown the primacy of the nation state. In the first wave of the pandemic, life on the entire planet was brought to the, still, uh, to the standstill and each country in its own way sought solutions to the global challenge. The first response to crisis was to close national borders to restrict the entry of citizens from countries at high risk to take care for the repatriation of their own citizens, to buy protective equipment for their own country at any cost and without regard for international solidarity. In a state of fear, people supported above all their own national community. It was not much different in the EU countries either as the most vulnerable country at the beginning of the crisis, Italy hoped in vain for the solidarity of other European countries. Each country tried to protect itself as best it could within its national borders. On the one hand, such a response seems puzzling since a global treat such as pandemic can only be confronted at the global level by coordinated action by all countries. On the other hand, such a response reflects the trend of recent years in many countries. The emphasis on national identity over global integration has contributed to the victory of Donald Trump in the United States 2016 to the EU, UK decision to leave the EU in the same year, to the victory of many other politicians in elections from Poland and Hungary to India and the Philippines, to name only a few countries. Already during the migrant crisis in 2015, no common agreement could be reached at the, EU, uh, at the EU level, but the sovereignty of individual nation states prevailed. The vision of the global world in which national identities will no longer play an important role has faded. As a result of the pandemic, globalization is no longer an obvious direction for the further development of humanity and nationalism no longer seems to be outdated way of thinking. As Bieber says, the temporary rise of the state weakens the neoliberal paradigm that the market alone can regulate economic needs. In fact, states have intervened against free markets 
to secure supplies for their citizens. The primacy of the state also weakens global governance and cooperation. We know that the world after the pandemic COVID-19 will be different place as it was before. It's not clear where global development will run, nor it is clear what the future will bring for the EU, although its member states agreed on common response to the pandemic after the, the initial confusion. A confrontation is expected between two trends, strengthening national efforts on the one hand and promoting global cohesion on the other. Let's look at the response of the church. On the 3rd of October 2020, Pope Francis published a new comprehensive social encyclical entitled Fratelli Tutti, dedicated to universal brotherhood and social friendship. The first aspect, universal brotherhood, stresses the importance of universal belonging to the human family. The second, social friendship, the importance of belonging to one own people and cultural environment, to one nation, own nation. The Pope explains that this is not a systematical teaching on this issue, and I agree <clears throat> with him, it's not very systematic written, but rather his personal thoughts, which serve, which should serve Catholics and all people of goodwill as a stimulus for further reflection. In a reflection on the confrontation with COVID-19 pandemic, Pope Francis expressed the conviction that the crisis had exposes our false securities. I quote, aside from different ways that various countries responded to the crisis, their inability to work together became quite evident. For all our hyperconnectivity, we witnessed a fragmentation that made it more difficult to solve problems that affect us all. The crisis reveals the vulnerability of the entire human family and the wrong paths we have taken in the past. The Pope has repeatedly criticized the neoliberal paradigm in the economy which he believes has given priority to the logic of free market over respect for the dignity of every person. I quote, the world was relentlessly moving towards an economy that thanks to the technological progress sought to reduce human costs. There were those who, were, who would have had us believe that freedom of the market was sufficient to keep everything secure. Yet the brutal and unforeseen blow of this uncontrolled pandemic forced us to recover our concern for human beings, for everyone, rather than for the benefit of a few. The pandemic reveals that we are a global community, all in the same boat, where one person's problem are the problems of all. The Pope wants to encourage all people to rebirth an universal aspiration for brotherhood. I quote, let us dream then as a single human family, as fellow travelers sharing the same flesh, as children of the same earth, which is our common home, each of us bring the righteousness of his or her beliefs and convictions, each of us with his or her own voice, brothers and sisters all." End of quote. The Pope noticed that, unfortunately, we have recently seen a decline in the, fields of, in the field of integration between nations, especially with regard to the rise of nationalism and populist politics. I quote Pope, in some countries, a concept of popular and national unity influenced by various ideologies is creating new forms of selfishness and a loss of the social sense under the guise of defending national interests. 
However, the idea of universal brotherhood there uh, does not mean uniformity for all people, but rather advocates respect for diversity, paying particular attention to the weakest and most vulnerable. The quest for universal brotherhood aims at to live together in harmony and peace without all of us having to be the same. Francis is resolutely opposed to any form of cultural colonization and emphasizes the importance of one's own roots in shaping the identity of individuals and nations. The starting point for the universal brotherhood is social friendship, which means the genuine connection of people within smaller communities, also within states. He, clarify, he clearly affirms that there is no worse form of alienation than to feel uprooted, belonging to no one. Openness to others presupposes an awareness of one's own wealth. I quote, just as there can be no dialogue with others without a sense of our own identity, so there can be no openness between peoples except on the basis of love for one's own land, one's own people, one's own cultural roots. But a healthy love for one's people and one's culture does not lead to isolation from the others, but rather opens one to dialogue. A healthy openness toward others does not endanger one's own identity, since identity is something dynamic and is able to integrate external elements into one's own culture. Moreover, the Pope reminds us that no state can ensure the common good for its population if it remains isolated. At the same time, however, it points out, he points out that it was the pandemic COVID-19 that once again demonstrated the irreplaceable role of the state, of the nation state, in providing basic living condition for its inhabitants. The welfare state is a necessary corrective to free markets as it guarantees respect for human dignity and the possibility of integral development for all people within communities. I quote, uh, where we need, what we need in fact are states and civil institution that are present and active that look beyond the free and efficient working of certain economic, political and ideological systems and are primarily concerned with individuals and the common good. And the con conclusive thoughts. The current crisis has further intensified the tension between the global and local levels of economic, political and social lives. As we have noted, nationalist tendencies have increased in various countries during this period. This is probably due to the fact that the process of globalization has neglected basic human feeling, feelings, such as sense of belonging, the feeling of security, the feeling of origin, and the importance of human recognition. And in the moments of crisis, these feelings prevail over rationality and pragmatism. The challenge for Christian social ethics is how to form in this vulnerable situation an appropriate attitude of resilience to these nationalistic tendencies, which emphasize selfish concern only for the member states of one own nation and reject the idea of the universal brotherhood and sisterhood of people. So how to find balance between national identity and promoting global solidarity? To illustrate the different interpretation of the role of the nation in securing the common good, let us look at two declaration of two neighboring bishops 
conferences from the last three years, one Polish and the other German. Polish bishops point out the genuine patriotism is the best way to promote resilience toward unhealthy nationalism. Education for love of the fatherland should protect young people from becoming hostile and intolerant towards other nations. Contrary, the German bishops do not speak of patriotism, but see, see the best form of resilience toward nationalism in the emphasis of the universal human rights and the strengthening of the supranational institutions. Despite different accents, there are certain common elements that determine Catholic Church views, uh, view on the relationship between the universal and the national common good. The Church is a universal community of disciples of Jesus and as such transcends national and cultural boundaries. It is called to build the unity and connectedness of all humanity. From the apostolic age on, the church has emphasized the principle of universal destination of created goods and the right of all to their use. Social teaching of the church established the principle of subsidiarity as the most appropriate way to establishing, of establishing re relations between the various levels of society, which on the one hand emphasizes the autonomy of the individual nation states, and on the other hand prevents their becoming absolute. Subsidiarity ensures autonomy and democratic participation and make, makes it easier at an operational level to achieve and implement common objectives. Um, the principle of subsidiarity thus guarantees respect for local and national identities and their autonomy while at the same time making it cl clear that in many cases, due to the interdependence of the economic market, international connections, environmental impacts, etc., nation states can no longer provide for the common good of their citizens alone, but must cooperate with others. Last sentence, although the social teaching of the church does not offer definitive political solution, to the relationship between the national and universal common good, it does provide central ethical principles on the basis of which we can seek answers. The solution is not the renunciation of national identity, but the promotion of national consciousness, which presupposes universal human rights for all people and always pursues its legitimate uh, its legitimate national interests within the horizon of the universal common good. Thank you very much.